Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. As for this video, we have the new adrenaline, the, the new adrenaline review, no, the new review of the, the, the new... The review of the new Adrenaline drivers, in this case the 24.3.1 drivers. And as I say in all my videos, 24 is the year 2024, 3 is the month March and 1 is the revision in that same month, so the first revision of March. And by the way, I know that some of you guys were actually waiting for this for, for quite some time, but man, I need to sleep. I mean, if you look at my video section, I've been releasing really awesome videos. For example, the video on the Ryzen 7 8700G on several DDR5 frequencies in terms of iGPU performance. And believe me, you should check that one because it is really cool. I also released a video about FSR 3.1 being announced. Then we have several other very interesting videos in most scenarios that you can see. So. AMD releasing the drivers in between all of this while releasing FSR or announcing FSR 3.1 and so on. Yeah, just let me sleep. Now, as for today's drivers, I can actually tell you right away that we do have some impressive gains in some scenarios. They're mostly positive things, actually. I, I'm yet to find a bad thing about these drivers. The only thing that I, that I had bad was actually regarding Windows. As soon as I reinstalled Windows, everything was working perfectly. So it was not a driver issue per se, it was more like a Windows issue. But still, almost everything about these drivers is positive. Lots of fixed issues, improved performance, especially in Horizon Forbidden West. In Horizon Forbidden West, the performance increase is brutal. I could even say it is almost as brutal as today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mo, bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. But yeah, I guess the best way is to start with the release notes, as usual. Firstly, we start with new game support with Dragon's Dogma 2, an awesome game by the way, Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition and Outpost Infinity Siege. And then we have expanded HyperRx tune support for Dragon's Dogma 2 as well, Diablo 4, Ghost Runner 2 and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And by the way, if you don't really know what is uh, expanded HyperRx tune or if you don't know what HyperRx tune is, it is basically games that are ready to work with HyperRx right out of the box. For example, in some scenarios, as soon as you enable HyperRx for a determined game, you need to use Radeon Super Resolution. And from what I know, uh, an hypertuned game, let's call it that, an hypertuned game can use out of the box immediately, automatically, uh, FSR inside the game when you activate HyperRx. So it will use FSR instead of RSR and RSR uses the algorithm from FidelityFX Super Resolution 1, FSR 1, so it is much worse than FSR 2 or 2.2, so which is a win, and at the same time it already supports anti-lag and uh, the anti-lag plus that will come later as well, once again, and Radeon Boost. So an hypertuned game is a game that supports HyperRx in all its features. As for the fixed issues, we also have lots of those, really lots of those, which is a very, very good thing if you ask me, especially for people playing Helldivers 2 and so on. And the first fixed issue is excessive micro stutter may be intermittently experienced after enabling AMD fluid motion frames for select games. And I can tell you right away that this was an issue uh, presented on the 24.2.1 drivers, I believe the 24.1.1 were working mostly fine with AFMF and it seems that we now uh, may have a fix for the, ex the excessive, sorry, micro stuttering with the previous drivers. So it's a great thing for people using AFMF. Improvement to intermittent driver timeout or application crash experienced while playing Helldivers 2 on AMD Radeon RX 7900 series GPUs. And for people playing Helldivers 2, this is kind of a godsend. Uh, I played a bit with the new drivers with um, with the 7800 XT, not the 7900 series. I will play or fiddle with it a bit more later. But according to my comment section, some people were actually having crashes while playing the game. And one of the fixes that you can do is just use Radeon Chill or MS Afterburner to lock the frames a bit below your maximum, meaning that the GPU won't be at 100% all the time and won't crash. But it seems that with the 24.3.1 drivers, most of those intermittent driver timeouts, crashes, slash black screens were fixed, which is once again a great thing for people playing Helldivers 2. 
Intermittent application crash or driver timeout may be observed while playing StarCraft 2 on Radeon 7000 series GPUs, another thing fixed, improvements to reduce initial loading times while playing World of Warcraft with RTX 12 API on some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 6800. And some people were actually telling me in the comment section the, of the previous driver videos I believe that AMD has no love for World of Warcraft and so on so on so on and their drivers work bad there and it seems that they are actually fixing things for World of Warcraft so don't forget if you have issues go to that little bug report tool on the software report your issue and AMD will fix it ASAP at least as soon as they can of course. Purple Corruption may be observed while playing Dying Light to Stay Human Reloaded Edition with Radeon Boost and Ray Tracing enabled. Some characters may appear invisible or have missing textures while playing Cossacks 3. Flickering lights may be observed while playing Space Engineers in certain indoor environments. And now this one is very important, the maximum memory tuning limit may be incorrectly reported on the AMD Radeon RX 7900 GRE graphics products. First of all, I believe that AMD says that it is incorrectly reported, but no, it was just basically locked. AMD locked the VRAM frequency on the, um, on the GRE, on the 7900 GRE. They locked it in order to not cannibalize both the RX 7800 XT and the 7900 XT cells. It makes sense that they actually increase the VRAM frequency because if you go to this video that I made some time ago, you can see that the 7900 GRE in some scenarios is equal to the 7800 XT. And that's because the 7800 XT can overclock the VRAM further, hence increasing the bandwidth. So even having 33% more computer units than the 7800 XT, 80 computer units versus 60 computer units, if you don't have enough bandwidth to feed all those computer units, well, they will be useless and the performance difference won't be that great. As soon as we increase the VRAM frequency with the 7900 GRE, I can guarantee you, but I will test you that, I'll test that in video, I actually have a 7900 GRE that AMD sent, the Nitro Plus, which is the best model, thank you very much, and I'll test it in order to see the difference that VRAM frequency alone will make. Shader caching may feel for Windows username containing accented characters, FPS performance metric may incorrectly report values while a game is minimized, GPU acceleration may be missing slashed grayed out in Adobe Premiere Pro on some hybrid graphics configuration, and the last fixed issue is performance drop may be observed while using some direct ML workloads in Topaz AI. But as I always say, well, this isn't all cotton candy and unicorns and rainbows, and pots of gold as well, of course. So we still have the known issues. With the first one being intermittent driver timeout or application crash may be experienced while playing Helldivers 2 on dual monitor setups on some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 7900 XTX. So although Helldivers 2 players can actually rejoice with way less driver timeouts, they still will have some issues. They might happen. It is not, this is not saying that it will definitely happen, but in some configurations, especially dual or triple monitor configurations, they might still have some issues with the RX 7900 XTX, which is a bummer, but if AMD actually acknowledges it, it will get fixed as soon as possible. Intermittent application crash may be observed while playing Lords of the Fallen and entering certain areas on the Radeon RX 6000 series GPUs, with a resolution targeted for the 24.4.1 drivers, which is nice. Artifacts may appear in certain mud environments while playing SnowRunner on some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 6800, once again resolution targeted for the 24. 4.1 driver, sorry, AMD Smart Access Video may be incorrectly reported as available on some systems with Parsec Virtual Display Driver, resolution targeted for the 24.5.1 driver, so one month to fix the, the two issues above, and now we, in May they will try to fix the, this issue of the AMD Smart Access Video. And the last one is audio and video may intermittently become out of sync while recording the AV1 codec in AMD Software Adrenaline Edition, with a resolution targeted for the quarter three. As they said before on the previous drivers, the resolution was still aimed at the quarter three, so it is more or less the same. And with the release notes done, let's go to the things that I found, the goods and the bads that I found with these drivers. And before going into this, remember that you can help this channel once again by going and watching to the sponsor. 
Today's video sponsor is GVG More. Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. Now, as for the things that I found with 24.3.1 drivers, once again, well, I found new things that we have, of course, support for new games, and I found that AMD updated the installer wallpaper. The installation wallpaper was different with the adrenaline drivers, and now we have a new one. And this is not something that will give you more performance or anything else. It's just a thing that I noticed, so I wanted to share with you. I personally like the new aspect more than the previous one, the new wallpaper. It looks more kind of AMD-ish, let's call it that. <laughs> As for the good points, we have better performance overall on the GPUs that I tested and I will test more, we have overall better performance. And when I say overall, I say overall, because it is not just in the new games that are supported now, we have overall better performance. I also tested Starfield, Starfield also performs better with the new drivers, which is a very good sign actually, a great sign per se. We also have a, an amazing FPS boost in Horizon Forbidden West, with better CPU slash GPU usage, especially in areas with lots of foliage and so on. In some scenarios, up to 25% performance increase like we saw on the 7800 XT on parts with lots of foliage. It improves the CPU and GPU usage, the new drivers, and make it perform much better in Horizon Forbidden West. Even if you have an older car like the, the RX 6750 XT, the performance increase is still there and will definitely make the difference gameplay-wise. So believe me, if you are going to play or if you are playing Horizon Forbidden West, install the 24.3.1 drivers because they're a must. I also had an HDR issue, um, basically an issue where the, the colors went bananas when I started the Windows and I had to go to Windows, enable HDR and disable it once again and then it was fixed until I reboot the computer or, uh, or, or turned off and on the monitor. But now it seems that it is fixed, at least for the cars that I tested, it seems that, it's, that it was fixed. And an issue that I had with Nightlight, well, that, that was a, a Windows issue as well. As soon as I reinstalled Windows, everything was working perfectly and is working perfectly. So, yeah. And the last thing is that finally the RX 7900 GRE limits were unlocked. And that's a very good thing. I believe the maximum VRAM frequency we had before was something like 2300 megahertz. And even today I saw some people commenting that they were achieving now 2600 megahertz on the VRAM on that same card because GDDR6 will easily do at least 2500 megahertz. Even if you are going from 2300 megahertz to 2500 megahertz with a card with 80 compute units, in this specific scenario, the difference will be very, very good because in some games like Ratchet and Clank and some others and when using upscalers and so on and ray tracing especially, a thing that this card lacks is indeed the bandwidth. Being able to increase from 2300 MHz to 2500 MHz or, or possibly, if you have a good sample, to 2600 MHz will improve the performance considerably in those scenarios and it will improve the performance considerably in games that use lots of bandwidth, like for example God of War. So it will be nice. I will test it of course, but yeah. I honestly didn't find any issue with these drivers. The previous ones had some issues here and there, the performance was down, downgraded here and there, but these drivers seem to be one of the best versions that we had in the past few months. So they're stable, they work fine, it's a win-win situation. This is definitely one of the best drivers that we, we've got in the past few months. If you are kind of in between installing these drivers or not installing th these drivers because you're afraid of having some issues, believe me, try these at least, at least try them. And well guys, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video because once again, that really helps a lot. Leave your comment in the comment section. Let me know, me and us, the community, know your experience with these drivers. If your experience is great, if those drivers, if these drivers are working fine or not, just let me know, I really want to know. Also, don't forget that we have the performance comparisons with the RX 7800 XT and the RX uh, 6750 XT in Horizon Forbidden West and Dragon's Dogma and also, uh, yeah, Starfield as well. And don't miss the next videos because they're gonna be really interesting with the first one being 40 games tested at 4K with the RTX 4080 Super. Then we'll have the RTX 4080 Super versus the 7900 XTX. And after that, after me retesting once again, 
and uh, the, uh, the RX 7900GRE uh, will also deliver some tests, for example, of the RTX 4070 Super versus RX 7800 XT versus RX 7900GRE. So stay tuned, very interesting videos will come. Now, finally, thank you very much for watching, guys, and see you in the next one. Cheers. Perhaps this has no bearing on the matter, but might I add, ought we not... in the sacred lands the focus helps you see the ones we need there those plants by the stream should do the trick Construction is a dead industry, Chief Pretorius. Those jobs aren't coming back. But Reliant Medical, Arkmite, and Satori Mills are dedicated to Gagarin. We were just hoping Gagarin could show the same thing. You want to know what I think about all these new businesses buying us the town? Garen.